All right, this video is on modeling, which in this class means a differential equation that represents some real world scenario. So here's a definition or sort of a definition. So a model is a differential equation. And so what that means is that it has like, it has an equal sign, it's an equation. Uh, and it has a derivative. So, and it has a like y prime, maybe a y double prime, or a dy dt, or a second derivative of y with respect to x, or maybe a combination of those things. So it has an equal sign and it has some derivatives. So that's a differential equation. And a model is a differential equation that uh, represents a real world scenario. All right, so um, let's see, what do I wanna do for our first example? Let's do an example of a real world scenario where the rate of change, actually I want to use a different color here. Okay. So here's a sentence. The rate of change of population So it takes me a second with the colors, but you'll get the point in just a second. So the rate of change of population is proportional. Let's see if I use that one. Proportional to the population. Okay, so this rate of change part, so a rate of change is going to be a change of population with respect to time. That's our derivative in our differential equation, that rate of change, and that should be a word that you heard quite a bit in Calc 1. So we're talking rate of change of population. So that is actually the population is, so is is represented by an equal sign mathematically, proportional, so I'm gonna use some proportionality constant, I'm gonna say it's K, to the population. And so this would be our differential equation. This would be our model right here. Uh, it's got a derivative in it, it's got an equal sign, and it represents some sort of real world scenario. In fact, human population is modeled by this population growth. And I'm, I'm guessing you've seen this before. This is exponential growth. We'll actually solve this and get an exponential function out of it for population. Um, all right, bulls here just so you can get an idea of kind of what some differential equations look like and how they model real world scenarios. dv dt is equal to g minus gamma over m times v. So this is a model for some kind of like a falling object. Uh, v is velocity and g is gravity and gamma is a drag coefficient on the object and m is the mass of the object. Um, and this differential equation is formed by just using forces. Uh, force is equal to a mass times acceleration. Acceleration is the um, acceleration there it is. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Um, and if we look at the mass times acceleration, this could also be, if we look at just an object that is falling, that's mass times gravity. And then in the opposite direction, we have this drag go, going against it, which would be a drag coefficient times velocity. And if you divide by mass, substitute in that acceleration is the derivative of velocity, then you've got your model. 
Um, so there's another model. Here's another example, pendulum. So pendulum where you've got some kind of a mass attached to the end of the length of some bar or string or something. And here's an angle um, from the vertical. And a model for the motion of this pendulum is the second derivative of that angle with respect to time is equal to gravity divided by the length times the sine of that angle. A couple of interesting things about this as far as we're concerned. This sign right here, that kind of creates some issues in solving this. Um, there is a way to actually solve this one that we'll learn in this class. Uh, but if you notice, this one just has a velocity where the derivative is velocity. There's not a sign. This is actually a nonlinear equation. And that kind of is a little bit more complicated than the linear ones. The other thing that I find really interesting in this model is that mass has nothing to do with the angular motion of the pendulum. I just think that's interesting. Um, and then let's see, I've got a couple more page. Oops, I'll use black again. So here's another example. This one's called Newton's Law of Cooling. And it's kind of long, so I'm actually going to pause my video. Okay, I paused the video for a minute so I could write up this thing instead of having to write it all out um, or type it up. So instead of writing it all out, okay, so we have the rate of change. So that is a d dt. So rate of change has to do with time. So rate of change of temperature of an object, so that's temperature of some object. Um, there's that word is, there's an equal sign. We've got our proportionality constant coming up next, proportional to the difference. So this is a in parentheses here because it's a difference between two temperatures. So it's a difference between the temperature temperature of the object and the surrounding temperature. The surrounding temperature. So now we need to use something else. I'll use T, maybe T sub A for ambient temperature. So, and this is a model that um, a lot of examples come up with cooking examples. You've baked a batch of cookies and they're too hot to eat. And so you want to know at what time they're going to be able to be consumed. Um, and so that's a typical kind of example, a little silly, but of something that you would use this model for um, in order to solve for that time. Um, and then we've got one other kind of example that I want to put on here. Um, and that's tank problems. These we're going to look at quite a little bit. Um, so we'll come back to these, but I at least wanted to give you just a little preview of them. So with tank problems, what usually happens, you have this tank, it's filled with stuff, and let's say it's just filled with salt water. Um, what we do is, and what we want to try to model, is the amount of salt in the tank. So I'm going to say that Y is the amount of salt, not salt water, the amount of salt. Um, and then usually you have something going into the tank, some sort of salt and water mixture, and then it's exiting the tank um, at some rate as well. So these tanks, because we want to model the amount of salt in the tank, we are going to have our differential equation is going to be the rate of change of the amount of salt in the tank. So rate of change of the amount of salt. 
Now, with these, I usually like to look at them in terms of units. Um, and so salt often is given in pounds, and then time often is given in minutes. Now, this is, I say often, but, you know, it can be any, you know, Y is just an amount of stuff. So it could be measured in grams or gallons, or there's all kinds of different measurement quantities for um, for salt or pollution or anything else that could be in the water. And then for time, obviously minutes, seconds, hours, etc. But I want to kind of just look at, at least I'm giving you a specific unit. All right. So uh, this is going to equal a concentration um, times a rate going into the tank minus a concentration times a rate going out of the tank. And if we look at the units of this, it, it makes some sense. A concentration of salt in the tank is pounds per gallon. So pounds of salt per gallon, that's a concentration of salt. And then rate would be in gallons per minute. So that would be an example of some units for rates. And if you notice, if you multiply those together, the gallons cancel and you get pounds per minute. So concentration out, if we've got pounds per gallon and gallons per minute going out. Now this concentration out is really the only thing that gets a little bit tricky. Um, when trying to set these up. Um, the concentration, the amount of pounds that is actually in the tank that then is going to exit is actually Y. Like that is our variable. And then that is divided by gallons, but the gallons in this tank sometimes change. So I like to think of that not as gallons in the tank, but as the volume of the tank. Everything else in these problems, the concentration and rate in and the rate out, are usually just given quantities. Um, but that Y and that volume, those are the ones that are a little bit tricky that we have to think about. All right, so there's some examples of models. Um, in class, we're going to do an experiment and come up with your own model based on experimental data. Um, and then we'll start solving these things in this class.